Hello once again, I'm Extra Life, and I'm in the middle of converting my synthesizer setup, which is a little bit large and ungainly at the moment, to a more compact all-in-one Eurorack configuration. And today I would like to start on converting the compressor module. This is the compressor I currently use for my drums. It is a Wampler Ego, and this is a wonderful compressor because it has a dry-wet control, a blend control. Uh, and that really is perfect for drums because it lets you do parallel compression in a very small space, and it lets you bring back some of the attack that you otherwise kind of squish out when you compress drums a lot. There are, of course, a couple options for compression in Eurorack, although it's not as popular as sound generation. You can build a compressor out of a VCA and an envelope follower circuit. So today I'm going to build this Hex Inverter Mutant Hot Glue, which is an all-in-one four-channel mixer with send and return and a compressor with a dry-wet control on it. So we're going to build this and compare the functionality and sound to the Wampler Ego and, of course, this FMR really nice compressor. Let's get started. We've got both boards all put together and this is pretty much ready to assemble and test out but there's one rather distressing cosmetic problem that i've discovered which is that these knobs that i got which are these kind of hammond style uh press fit d shaft knobs that fit over these uh the indication mark is in the wrong place so that's not good that's because on this design the potentiometers are fastened uh with the terminals at the top instead of the bottom i don't know why hex inverter did that i guess they had pots that point the other direction so anyway we're going to have to uh, clean off the marks on these knobs and find some other way to mark them. So here is the mutant hot glue all put together in the rack. And if you used a mixer before, you'll probably find most of this very familiar. We've got some inputs down here. We've got some level controls. We've got an auxiliary send and then some bus effects over here. So let's plug in some drums and see how it sounds. I'll plug in the kick drum into channel one. Here we got the snare drum. So the hot glue has a couple of really cool tricks, including this send return system and of course the bus effects and there's two bus effects a compressor and a distortion and the way the distortion works is it's normaled to the return input i think so if you turn up the send on a channel and nothing's plugged into the send return loop you'll just start sending that instrument to the distortion
So if we take our send and plug it into the input of my reverb module over here, which is uh, an IntelliGel 1U uh, multi-effects module. Or we can do a delay. So super fun and it's great to have time-based effects obviously on a send return because you can control the volume independently and if you press uh, stop on your sequencer they can continue playing even though you might have muted this channel. And this mixer also has a secondary output for output A which is uh, something that you could use to drive sidechain compression through this compressor or I could do it with an external compressor like my VCA that I've got going on the baseline here. So if I turn on this uh, synth so that you can hear it really clearly uh, you'll start to hear it duck using the kick drum as its gate sidechain signal. So we'll get this nice pumping effect. So again, just nice and handy to have that extra aux that's not uh, controlled by Ascend, you can just use it for your compression. And if this is the only compressor that you've got, actually it might be really handy to use it on this one. Speaking of the compressor on the hot glue, it is a VCA compressor as we looked at uh, using a that dynamics module. So let's hear how that sounds uh, with a little bit more information in the mix. So I'll plug in my auxiliary percussion and get some sounds going here. All right, so we have a nice little 909 groove going on here. Now we have this four knob compressor, which has our gain, blend, threshold, and ratio controls. And of course, if we turn the compressor all the way up to 100% uh, wet, we can use the gain knob to adjust essentially uh, how much post compression gain we're applying to it. So that effectively is our output volume. And if we leave that low, then we can kind of match it to the uh, input volume. But now if we turn down the threshold, you can see this LED starts to come on, indicating that we're actually ducking the incoming signal. So we have to turn up the output gain to compensate. And this is a sound that's kind of known as like squashed or squished because you can really hear like every time there's a sharp attack, it just brings down the volume of the whole signal and it turns it into this much more squished type of waveform. And we can adjust how much squish we give it by this ratio control. So if we turn this down, we don't do nearly as much compression. And if we turn it all the way up, it becomes way too dramatic to actually be useful as an effect. But the cool thing about this is that we have the dry-wet control, so we can still use this kind of extreme compression setting and then bring in some of that dry signal to get more of the original attack. So again, here's the dry signal. You know, perfectly good sound, but we bring just more energy in whenever we add some of this wet compressed signal. without really changing the overall impact of the drums, we just add more energy to it. So it's a really great way to use uh, drum processing. This ratio is probably a bit too extreme still, and we're maybe compressing it a bit too much. So this to me is kind of a set and forget thing, right? If you've got your like levels in a good place as far as the drum mix, uh, you just kind of leave this compressor where it sounds best and don't touch it. It's not so much a performance tool as a processing tool.
And just for fun, I thought it would be nice to kind of take a quick comparison between two other compressors that I've got on hand. So this is the sound of the hot glue, if I pull that up real quick. And if I turn that all the way down, real dry drum sound. Now we can engage the really nice compressor. So we can lengthen the attack and release on this, which is a super nice feature to have because you can uh, dial in really how much compression you're giving on the signals uh, front and back. And then the output gain. And so let's compare that with the uh, mutant hot glue. And back. So I think the uh, the really nice compressor is uh, a lot more transparent. It has a lot more kind of uh, range of sounds that you can apply, but it's a straight through. There's no dry wet control. So if you want to use this for parallel compression, you need some kind of send return system or do it on a mixer with two channels. And having these time controls really helps you dial it in. There are time controls uh, for the release on the hot glue, but you have to swap out a jumper on the back of the module. So not super easy to access. Let's try out the Wampler Ego, which is a guitar pedal. And we'll go uh, kind of full wet on the blend here. You can hear that gets really squished sounding if we have the, uh, the attack a little bit longer. And the sustain turned up. This is basically the threshold, but in reverse. So that's the sound of the Wampler Ego, uh, I think dialed in to sort of maximum squish. It's a little bit more noisy, uh, but we can turn this down so that we get kind of a more uh, appropriate blend between the two signals. And I think that's actually a fairly close approximation to what the hot glue sounds like. We'll try that off. Again, it's hard to get a one-to-one -one comparison because these are obviously not like calibrated controls. It's just left and right. But overall, I think those two sound pretty similar. If you're looking for something like the hot glue, but you don't need the mixer component, the Wampler Ego might be your ticket. It's got this blend control, which is really nice. Uh, and in the past, I've gotten a ton of great drum sounds with it. Well, there you have it. The Hex Inverter Mutant Hot Glue DIY Edition. I think it's a real Swiss Army knife, a very useful module. Does a lot of things in your rack that you would normally need kind of outboard gear to do, like uh, mixing and compression and those things. So I'm really glad to have this in my rack, and it's going to allow me to condense a lot of the stuff that I normally had on a pedal board beforehand into the rack, keep things more modular and much more portable. As always, I want to say a huge shout out and thank you to all of my supporters over on Patreon. It means the world to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so thank you very much. And if you're interested in getting early access to all of my new videos, as always, I want to say a huge shout out and thanks to my supporters over on Patreon. It means the world to me to have your support. It means that I'm able to take the time to make and edit these videos, so thank you very much. And if you're interested in getting early access to all of my new videos, as well as a little bit of bonus content, head on over to patreon.com slash extra life and become a supporter today. Well, I think that about does it for today. This module, I can already tell, is gonna be super useful, and it was a lot of fun to build and compare to some other compressors, and to see how the mixer topology in this Eurorack format works. So thank you, as always, for watching. Practice and enjoy. I'll see you next time.